I was down with the no way up and I needed some help. Everybody breathing but not living, just existing. Well, and I needed some help. Somebody told me that Jesus will set you free.
about being in the house of God. And you need to know the house of God is not the bricks, the mortar, and the stone. The house of God is you. We are the house of God. So any place we dwell, it becomes the house of God. So you are sitting, standing, I don't know what you're doing, in the house of God, even though you're not here with us. I just want to say very quickly that Shiloh has been blessed. It's a wonder we haven't all gone under. That was not supposed to rhyme, but it's a wonder with what's going on in the world, but our keeping power, our strength is one thing, and that is this word of God. This word of God is so powerful. It's so blessed. We are so blessed because we can rely on God's word. Shiloh, I need you to know to all of our, our friends who are visiting, uh, whether you're on YouTube, whether you're here, uh, I mean, whether you're at our Facebook, um, Shiloh uh, Praise uh, Church on YouTube or anywhere you are, Instagram, you need to know that we are blessed. Our end of the year report came in in 2020 because we gave, because we kept working, because we did what God said has been a blessed year, not only for our church, but I know for you and your family. Let's go to the word. Go with me to Luke's gospel. Powerful, powerful word today. You're going to get delivered. Luke's Gospel, chapter 18. Luke's Gospel, chapter 18. Mm, let me begin reading it, verse 1. Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not faint or not give up. He said, in a certain town, there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared what people thought. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with a plea. Grant me justice against my adversary. For some time, for some time, he refused. But finally, watch some time and watch finally. He said to himself, even though I don't fear God or care what people think, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually come back and attack me. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says, and will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night. He Will he keep putting it off? I tell you, he will see that they get justice quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? Pray with me right now. Father God, this, uh, you've already anointed your word. Lord, I ask you to anoint me afresh. Someone, put someone in a receiving mode right now, God, that they can receive and hear the word. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, we're going to talk from this thought this morning. Victory needs a relentless and persistent spirit. Victory needs a relentless and persistent spirit. You can interchange those words just like I did because it's a double dose of driving about what kind of spirit you need. We've all heard the old adage, if it was easy, anybody would do it. And usually the person who has to hear that, it comes at a time when they were going after something and they hit the wall or hit the reality that anything in life worth achieving is going to cost and it is not easy. Whenever you see someone who has succeeded, whenever, well, I'll back up and say whenever you have succeeded and you want to stay at that level or go higher, how many will admit there's times I got to go back and 
Like they said, get that old feeling again. I got to get back in my word. I got to get back. Because it's not easy to stay at a certain level of deliverance without hard work. In the movie, A League of Their Own, Tom Hanks, he was talking to one of his best players on the team. Uh, this was the all women's baseball league that took over while all the men were at war. He was talking to the best player on the team. Her name was Dottie. She was about to leave the team. And he ran out and said, Dottie, what are you doing? And she said to him, watch this, watch the word she said to him, because I know we've been there. She said to him, she said, he said, because I know you love baseball. She said, yeah, but it just got too hard. And then Tom Hanks said something that I'm going to say back to you this morning. He said to her, it's supposed to be hard. If it was easy, anybody could do it. He really expressed it. He was talking about baseball. In essence, he was really talking about a philosophy to understand life. But I will tell you, this morning, he was talking to every Christian, every believer, every saint, every hopeful person that has allowed their fire to go out and you're about to give up. He's talking to every saint who somehow, I don't know where you got it from, you got into this kingdom walk and somehow you thought you were joining a picnic and not an army. Somehow you thought that you were going to just be able to poof and, and stuff would happen. You got saved. You learned a few deliverance scriptures. You heard you prayed a little bit, learned how to pray. You got you a title. You got you some church clothes. You start running around saying, I'm a Christian. And you almost forgot this is a war. And so you were watching television. You know what happens when you watch television? You see some of the television evangelists. They wave their hand and everybody on the road just faints out, falls out. And then all of a sudden, they're slain in the spirit. And they get up talking about how healed they were when they were there. You saw some other people testifying to how God got them a house. And God got them a car. And how God did these things in their life. And you're sitting there wanting to emulate what they have. Can I tell you something? Don't you ever think anybody who stands up and testifies about getting to a place in God where it is fruitful that they have not shed some tears. That they have not had some nights where they were struggling. That they have not had some times where they had to feel like almost giving up, but they held on. It's not easy. It's like you see all those easy advertisements. It's not any of that. When you hear somebody say, four quick steps to healing, you'll never be sick again. It's a lie. It's a lie. We got to realize that God needs, if you're going to get victory from God, you're going to need a relentless, persistent spirit that won't quit. You got to keep your spirit up. What God is talking about in this parable, he's talking about people in the parable. He's showing us through the truth of this parable that there is no way this widow, a defenseless widow, should have been able to stand up against this judge. But she did. Because she never let her spirit get down. Uh, Matthew's Gospel, chapter 7, verse 13, 14 says, uh, Enter in at the straight gate. Because there's a wide gate and easy is the way, but it leads to destruction. But there's a narrow gate. Oh, and few, and everybody goes in there. There's a narrow gate that leads to life, and only a few go in there. Let me say it again. Matthew 7, 13, 14. Enter in at the straight gate, because there, wide is the gate, and easy is the way that leads to destruction. But he said there's a narrow gate, or the straight gate, that it's hard, it's a hard way, but it leads to life. And only a few people go in there. I just wonder what gate you thought you were entering when you entered your salvation. When we listen to people like the Apostle Paul, who at the end of his journey, 
Now, you got to think when you hear those words, we preach it and we shout. It means that he had some hard way and there were some times when he was beaten and all. He had to keep his spirits up. Can I tell somebody, keep your spirits up? Your spirit got to be relentless when your body wants to quit. Your spirit got to be relentless when everything around you looks like it's not there. Internally, you got to be relentless and persistent because you believe the word of God. But Paul said these words in 2 Timothy 4 and 7. I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I kept the faith. Now think about that. Paul, what did you do? Paul told us, I fought a good fight. That sounds like the meat. And Paul, even though he wrote two-thirds of the Old Testament, even though he had all of this power, that power came to him because he was fighting. I got some fighters out there that will testify. You've had to fight all. Oh, you look good, honey. Right now, you look good, sir. But you had to tell somebody, I've been down on my knees, and I've had to fight through some stuff to get where I am. He said, I finished my course. There's this, I got to get out of this, but your course, if God has laid out a course, he's going to provide you with the strength you need for the course. Quit trying to back up and turn around and let God bless you. And then he said, I kept the faith. That means there were times when his faith was being challenged, but he kept it. And if Paul did all of that, don't you know God is telling us the only way to survive is through a persistent, relentless spirit. In this text, this widow, one of the lowest uh, folk in society in biblical times, this widow, defenseless, helpless, no way to make a living, decided she was not going to quit. I hope I'm helping somebody. She decided I'm not throwing in the towel. I won't throw my chips in. And when everything else went down, she lifted herself up through her spirit. And God is saying, he's teaching us through the power of prayer. One of the most foundational weapons in our arsenal. One of the weapons that keeps us going. I'm going to show you some things about prayer this morning that will make you rethink all of this habit, tradition, vow. I'm going to make you think. Sometimes we hear something that's so powerful, we hear it so many times that we forget the real power it has. But you know sitting there, you can pray. Have you ever thought about that? Sitting there, you can just reach off and start talking to God. And the crazy thing is, he listens and wants to give you what you need. That's the power of prayer. But if our spirits are down, if we listen and go around and listening to all of the negativity, we're going to miss our chance to get a victory in our life. We must go through situations and keep our spirit up. What am I talking about? Everybody in the Bible who got blessed. You know, you're going to hear me because you got to. I know we look at this sometimes and we see the victory piece, but we got to go back and examine some text and just see some folks so you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, the woman with the issue of blood. We talk about her so much that when somebody says issue of blood, you just turn off like you know. But let me share with you from the context of this text. She spent 12 years bleeding and didn't give up. Not one year, not two years, not three years, not seven, 12 years every day trying medications and trying all kinds of superstitions that were back in biblical times. She tried everything, went to every doctor there was, but she kept on trying. And then it says that she went to the medical community and they said, we cannot help you. How do we know? Because out of 12 years, she still wasn't healed. And then she went to the church community, the religious community. You want to talk about keeping your spirits up? It's bad when you come to church and church folk knock your spirit down. It's bad when you come to church and church folk don't have any faith in you. Some folk you better not even talk to. And this woman kept going when the religious community said, look, uh, uh, we don't have any healing. Now, all we know is the law say you can't go walk around dragging no blood in here. And this woman, at that moment, her spirit turned relentless. She stopped listening to them. She got in her mind, if I can just touch his garment. With the crowd in front, she kept on moving, blood trail behind her, got to Jesus. She said, I'm going to touch him. Sometimes you can't allow your spirit to depend on other folk lifting you up. Come on, you better get your own shout. Where you at right now? I don't care who you with, where you are. I 
found out a long time ago. I got to have my own shout. I got to keep my spirit up. Blind Bartimaeus. Think about it. Sometimes we, we hear it and we say, oh, I know what happened to him. But watch this. Look at it from the context of him trying to be relentless and persistent. Blind man, not supposed to be doing anything, just begging. He heard some noise. He said, hey, what's all that noise? And they said, Jesus coming. Man, he had heard, couldn't see him. He had heard that Jesus was something. He started hollering, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And everybody told him to shut up. And the more they told him, the louder he got. His spirit was defiant and said, this is my chance to get my blessing. I'm going to get blessed. Think about what happened to him. He's sitting there. Disciples, again, I'm sorry to say, religious folk tell him, shut up. And he hollered louder and louder. And he hollered, <laughs> here's the blessing, till Jesus heard him. Can you tell somebody, oh, if I can get you to high five right now, tell somebody, holler till Jesus hear you. Holler until you know you made a connection. And I want you to know something. That this man hollered because he refused to let the voices of naysayers stop him. And you know why he did it? Because you haven't been where I've been. Shut up. You, you, don't know what, you don't know what I'm wrestling with. You don't know the pain I deal with. You don't know the struggles I deal with. You might think you know me on the outside, my facade, but you don't really know me. And that's why Blind Bartimaeus got his blessing. Jesus showed up, said, what do you want? And healed him. And finally... David, think about it, kicked out of his country, being chased by the king, hunted, ragged, had to stay with the Philistines, then leading a ragtag group of folk, went off to fight, still serving God, went off to fight, and while he was gone, the enemy came in, took his family, took the men who entrusted in his care, took their wives and children, and then got back, and those folk wanted to stone David. Are you, are you, are you seeing the religious spirit? And David could have at that point said, God, I give up. I, I killed the lion. I've done everything you said. And now here I am trying to still fight for you, although I don't have a country. You told me I'd be a king. You told me you were going to never leave me. I'm writing all these songs. And now the people who you, I trusted, who trusted me, you let their families get taken. But David didn't do that. No, go to 1 Samuel chapter 30 and look at verse 6. It says, and David encouraged himself in the Lord. That took a lot to keep his spirit up. So let's dive into this with you understanding the spirit of God. It says, and Jesus told his disciples a story that men ought always pray and not faint. You looking at verse one? And not give up, not faint. What he was saying is the only way not to faint is to pray. So my first point is if you're going to get victory, just in case you're writing it down, you need a relentless, persistent prayer life. Now, understand. The parable of the widow is not the main focus of the story. It's to support the, the, the biblical truth. The biblical truth is the power of prayer. So Jesus wanted to bring them back to remind them, just like I'm reminding you, that you have the power of prayer. Prayer is special and prayer is anointed. And prayer is how God has chosen to talk to and bless his children. Here's what he said. But you ought to always pray and not faint. Here's what, when you pray, you ought to have a prayer that's going the long way. You can't pray a prayer, it not happen, and then you stop believing. He said, no, the prayer you pray, you're going to hold on to it until you get what you prayed about. That's a new concept. But he said, in between, I don't care how bad your spirit gets, hold on. And here's the key. He said, either you're praying in the text or you're fainting. Which one are you doing? You can't be doing both. Here's what God said. If you're not praying, holding on, being relentless, you're fainting or giving up. So today, you only got one or two choices. God said, this is the only way that you're going to get your blessing. You got to pray and not faint. So if you're not praying, you're fainting. If you're fainting, you're not praying. Jesus was letting them know that prayer is a divine way 
that he's given us, his children, to tap into the kingdom of God. Remember when he came down and he gave the Sermon on the Mount and he started bringing pictures of the kingdom. He wanted us to know that while we're walking here, we're never defenseless, that we have power down here on earth. I should never be so detached and so lonely and so scared. You can turn me off right now, get on your knees and pray and bombard heaven and something will happen if you're relentless. But when he taught him to pray, listen to the words, listen to the key feature of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Praise, worship. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Jesus said, he just gave us a right, that when we pray, we need to understand that we just brought down a kingdom power because he said that his will needs to be done on earth as it is in heaven. So when we pray, we bring heaven down. Oh, better than that. When we pray, we bring heaven onto our promise. That's even better than that. When I pray, I just, like, I cover my promise with what God said, and there is my blessing. Uh, when, when you cover it with the right thing, it works. Uh, some, some of you don't understand. I like honey mustard. Uh, and so when I get a, a burger, I don't do ketchup anymore. But I love some honey mustard. And if I got a burger, and I just got, I don't care what it is, a turkey burger. Uh, uh, you know, I don't eat red meat. Y'all don't know that, but my, my church knows that. I, I had a turkey burger, and I could be eating it. But man, if I put some honey mustard on it, that thing pops. It smacks. And all of a sudden, it satisfies me. God said, if you pray and put your kingdom understanding on your prayer, I am a child of God. I'm a joint heir with Jesus Christ. When I open my mouth, an anointing comes out. When I pray, demons shake. When I pray, everything gets well. When I pray, healing comes. When I pray, finances come. When I pray, deliverance comes. When I pray, anybody know what I'm saying? You ought to tell yourself, build your spirit up. When we pray, God shows up. God stops what he's doing in glory, looks down where we are, and comes out. Many times you didn't know when you shook glory, God had to get some angels who were taking a break or maybe they were sleeping. And God said, hey, get off your break. One of my servants just called. There's an emergency down there. And he prayed to me. Prayer. Bombarded heaven. You need healing, pray for it, call heaven down. You need deliverance, pray for it, call heaven down. You need finances, pray, call heaven down. What are you doing sitting there? Call it down. Don't cry. Don't just be sick. Call it down. Because God gave us the ability to pray and call heaven down. James 5, 16 says, the effectual fervent prayers of a righteous man avails much. NIV. The prayers of a righteous person, righteous in God, will be powerful. You, my friend, my sons, my, my brothers and sisters, you pray power because of who you are, because it taps into the kingdom. So when you pray, you pray down the power of God. They're effectual. 1 John 5 14 and 15 says it like this, and this is the confidence that we have. If we ask anything according to his will, we shall get it. Because we know, because we know that if we pray, he hears us, and the fact that he hears us means we shall have our petitions. Did you hear what God said? If you pray, you'll have our petition, which brings me down. Just, I told you, most of this parable is on prayer. I'm going to get to the widow, but this is about the widow. It's how Jesus had to tell them, understand prayer. Watch this. So in order to have a relentless, persistent prayer, who we'll write this down, there, there's, there's something in the book that tells us how to do it. There is a pattern that touches God because he gave it to us, and there is a mindset that we have to have. The first pattern we have to understand is Jesus said in Matthew 7, 7, ask, seek, and knock. When we ask, seek, and knock, we get our blessing. Now watch the intensity of that prayer. It starts with asking, then it starts with seeking, then it starts with knocking. 
Some of y'all have some of the worst prayers because you don't have any intensity of asking. Then when things don't happen, you keep seeking. Then when it don't happen, you keep on knocking till heaven gives you what you want. That's the intensity of the prayer. It is written, that text, those instructions, Matthew 7, 7, is written in, and the tense makes a difference. It's written in what we call the present tense. No, it's written in what we call linguistically the present continuous tense. That means what it's really saying when we transliterate it from the Greek, it's really saying keep asking. Don't just ask once. I don't care who told you that. Keep seeking. When you don't find it, keep on seeking. Keep knocking. The Bible tells us we have not because we ask not. Somebody stop right now. I just woke somebody up. Keep asking. Well, I don't see it, Reverend. Keep seeking. But I don't know where it is. Keep knocking until it comes. What am I talking about? Watch this. When I keep doing it, I get a blessing. Uh, there's, a, there's a story that goes, this man who was a, a, a best, one of the best employees at his job, he worked hard, always early, stayed late, woke, bonus, woke worked bonus hours. Uh, was the one who, when the boss had a difficult problem, called him. Well, sure enough, at the end of the year, raises came out. He got his raise. But there was another guy who worked with him, alongside of him, who was lazy, truth be told. They had to make him work. Sometimes he's just getting there when it's time to punch in. But they got to the break room one day and start comparing raises. And come to find out, his raise was bigger than the man who was a hard worker. Oh my God, set him off. He went home, told his wife, he said, honey, this is not fair. You know how much time I get? You know, we, we quickly say what's not fair. This is not fair, you know how much time I get? And you know all of this, and all of a sudden, he said, he got so mad that the unfairness and the pity turned to anger, he wrote a resignation. Next morning, took it into the boss. When he got into the boss, Boss looked at it and called him in and said, this, this, this is kind of sudden, ain't it? And the man couldn't hold it. All oh, that pity just burst out of him. He said, well, uh, it ain't fair. And his raise and my raise. He told him everything. And the boss was just sitting there looking. And then the boss said, well, can I ask you a question? When you got your raise, if you thought it wasn't sufficient, if it wasn't what you wanted, why didn't you come back and ask for a higher raise? The man looked and said, what was, what was, uh, and he said, no, no, you didn't get it because you didn't ask for it. And the man all of a sudden just thought about taking that moment. He said, well, I want a higher raise. And the boss said, done. Now watch this. He said, and by the way, as the man was leaving, the reason so-and-so got a bigger raise, because after he got his raise, he came in and asked for another raise. The Bible said many of God's children, you're sitting back having pity parties when God said, you just quit. You just fainted. You stop asking. You start thinking about, I work harder than everybody else. I see other people getting blessed. I'm not blessed. You do all of that instead of just keep asking. Keep seeking. Keep knocking. And the next thing you have to seek. Watch the intensity. Seeking. When I was growing up, one of the, one of the uh, great, you know, we used to play all the games and, and kids don't have this fun like we used to have. One, two, three, red light. You know, we played marbles. We, we played all kinds of stuff outside. But well, one of the games everybody here has played is hide and go see. That's where somebody gets at the tree. Usually it's a tree. You know, hide your face. And we all hide while you count to 10. One, two, three. Then when you get done, you say, ready or not, here I come. Right? Well, we were playing over one of my friend's house when I was younger. And I remember this one little boy, he started howling. Now, in, in case you, you, this generation don't get the paradigm, parents didn't like you interrupting their day. So you out there playing. Kids ain't supposed to be causing no problems. So we were trying to tell him, shut up, what are you doing? Too late. My friend's mom came outside, saw this little boy crying, and said, what did y'all do to him? We said, nothing. And then she looked at him. He's sobbing on his bed. Ever seen anybody cry? He's doing all that. And she said, what's wrong? And he said, they, they, won't, they won't seek me. They won't try to find me. Said they walk right past me and won't find me. Walk right past me. I wonder if God 
watching you cry, is saying to himself, or, or wonder if God is like that little boy crying and it hurts him after all the times he blessed you that you quit seeking. Wonder if God ever said, I'm standing right here. And you walk right by me. Because you won't seek me. And then knock. It's just you got to keep making noise. I don't care if you got to praise. Sing. Whatever you got to do to get your blessing. Now let's go to the heart of the text. It ain't going to be that long because this parable speaks for itself. It said there was a, a widow in this town. And she went to this judge. And she told this judge she had had a, a, something done to her that was wrong. She wanted the judge to avenge her or to take care of her. And we understand what she did. The text tells us that the judge said no. She kept following the judge, seeking the judge. She kept going to the judge. I'm gonna paint you a picture. The judge wake up in the morning to go to work. She's standing outside his yard. Avenge me! He get in town to his job, look out the window. Secretary said, hey, there's a lady down here. Avenge me! He go to have lunch, whatever restaurant he in, she peering through the window. Avenge me! She just did not let up. He got in his car, oh God, drove home. And there she was waiting at the mailbox. Avenge me! Pretty soon he said, I don't fear God, I don't fear anybody. But this woman is driving me crazy. So we know what she did, and we know when she got blessed, when the judge came to the end of his rope. But I'm more interested, and Jesus was, in why she did it. Here's what the text said. Avenge me of my right. She did it because she said, this belongs to me. Widows, in biblical times, in the scripture, had a special right. They were in the category of orphans to be taken care of. So, when this widow cried, the judge had a moral right, but he wasn't a godly judge. And so this widow said, I'm going to keep fighting till you give me what I need. That's one of the problems. Many of us give up when it's time to fight. We start running because the devil's on our tracks. We start running because things aren't happening. Instead of fighting, we can't get our needs met because we're like this little boy the man saw running down the road and he was, he was concerned. So he called him with the boy. He said, why are you running? And the young man said, I'm, I'm trying to stop two boys from fighting. And the man looked and said, oh, isn't that admirable? That's great. And so he said, well, who the boys? Who's fighting? He said, me and Mike Miller. He said, I'm trying to stop from fighting. I'm running. I'm trying to stop from fighting. Are you running? I know you're a Christian. Maybe you don't want to admit it. But if you're not praying and standing, you're running and fainting. And God is saying, you have to stand. Two principles you have to stand. Because not only must you ask, you must get a mindset like this woman had. 1 Thessalonians 5.17, pray without ceasing. All that means is I set my mind up to keep believing God will, he's going to fix it, and I set my mind up, I'm going to make any adjustments I need to make to get what I need. So right now, somebody needs to dry their eyes right now. You need to quit, you know, put some things in the past. Watch this. And this widow said, no, I believe my mindset is it's always working so I can receive my miracle. And sometimes that means I got to stop some things I'm doing that's stopping my blessing. Uh, uh, the story goes that there was a mental institution had a test when the clients were ready to be released to go home. They would give them a test. They take them to this little closet that it was a sink and there was a they turn the faucet on, and the water is overflowing on the floor. And when they walked in, they would give them a bucket and a mop and say, clean this water up. Now, if the person just started mopping, trying to clean the water up without turning the faucet off, they knew they weren't ready to be released. But if they turned the faucet off first, and then they began mopping, then they would let them go because they understood holistically how to stop the water. Some of you need to stop the pain by not blaming God and looking in your own heart. All you're doing is mopping up. No, 
why you got a problem on Monday, another problem next Tuesday, and another problem next Saturday? Because all you've done is mop up the problem and let the water keep flowing. Maybe that water is your quitting. This woman said, it's mine and I want it. And it's the principle of the thing. I'm not giving the devil anything because it's the principle. If it, anybody know it? It's mine. So you, don't you want your healing? Don't you want your deliverance? So this woman, second point, victory takes a persistent, relentless spirit. That's the point I just did. Third point, closing point. God said, did you hear this, judge? He didn't fear God. He didn't fear man. But he gave in for persistence. See, God does several kinds of parables. He does contrast and compare. He does parables that he is the central character. And he does parables where there's an evil person that's the central character. And he tries to tell them, now that evil person can do it. Let's contrast what I would do as your God. And the text says God did just that. He said, how much more will I do as your father? If this unjust judge had to give in for persistence, if my children call my name day and night, won't I give in? Oh, somebody just got it. Don't quit. It's time to ask. See, now nah, it's time to be persistent. The last one is victory needs a persistent, relentless spirit. Keep your spirit up. Somebody raise up, wise up this morning. Get your spirit up and realize that if I pray persistently, if I don't let anything knock me down, if I don't stop, here's the secret of the prayer. It doesn't take much. Just don't stop. It doesn't take much. The devil will quit before you quit. It doesn't take much. You can bring heaven down. Right now, you need to shout out. You need to pray out. You need to praise out. Come on, shake yourself. Wake up and remember, if this defenseless widow who had nobody to protect her, trusted in God, how much more is God waiting on you to wake that problem back up? You gave up on it, but God got it, and he want to give it to you. All you got to do is pray for it, believe in it, trust in it. It will come persistent, relentless. No, I ain't giving you my stuff. No, I'm not giving up. No, I won't quit. This widow said victory takes a spirit. Although it's down, we'll never be out. Come on, praise God, somebody, wherever you are. Three points. Victory takes a relentless, I mean, persistent, relentless prayer life. It takes a persistent and relentless belief in your personal possessions. It takes a persistent and relentless spirit. If you do like this widow, God said, pray and don't faint. That's the promise. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for everything that was said and done. Bless everyone who has heard this word. Take the cobweb off somebody's dream they let drop and promise they let drop and let them know the best is still yet to come. In Jesus' matchless name, amen. Please go into the chat. Send, some, send us a word. Tell us how this word blessed you. Uh, send us. Maybe you got a revelation today that's going to change your life or somebody else's life. Spread it. Come on. Go on and share and, and send this message out on your Facebook, your Instagram. Let somebody get this. People need this word. They need to hear that the only reason I haven't gotten blessed because I quit is Pastor Duncan saying, God bless you. Oh, and go to our website and let us know. See what we're doing here, Shiloh. In Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great day. Talk it to him and leave it there. I was down with a new way up and I needed some help. Everybody breathing but not living, just existing. Well, and I needed some help. Somebody told me. Jesus will set you free.